Silicon Valley Bank is no more. On Friday the 10th, the U.S. bank, Silicon Valley Bank, was shut down. It was one of the most prominent lenders in the world of technology startups and no longer viable. It is also the biggest U.S. bank to fail since the 2008 uh, financial crisis and it's been shut down by the U.S. regulators and I was thinking it could be a good new case study maybe for my risk management courses for both bachelor and master students as we also recently discussed the interest rate risk management in the Basel Accords refer to the slides of standards and regulatory requirements and oversight mechanisms, the Basel Accords and MIFID II. So this case of Silicon Valley Bank in 2023, after years and years of talking and implementing of three Basel regulations and international guidance on minimum liquidity and market risk management and capital standards and others, we still have problems, right? So as we discussed the regulations in three levels of international, national, and internal levels, uh, let's start first with the international ones. So as we discussed in our class, even with all these regulations and standards, the banks are not guaranteed to be always on the safe side and they must manage their portfolio, balance sheet, and different risk to do their principal duty to save the depositors money and benefits. So Basel Accords, MIFID II, regulations and supervisions must be helpful to avoid systemic risk, but they could not guarantee all problems and could not replace the necessary management actions in financial institutions. If we look at the reports coming out of this bank's balance sheet, this is a failure of managing the balance sheet and the asset liability committee's articles, withholding a large sensitive portfolio of mortgage-backed securities. It is a large amount of interest rate risk, right? So as you can find in the Moodle page of the Master Course of uh, Market and Credit Risk Management, I shared the Basel Committee on Bank Supervision 368 as a support material before the session on interest rate risk in the banking book, and it is a reference that you can review again for this case. Remember also the CAMELS methods and DCEP for finding the systematically most important banks, and the Excel file that I showed how to calculate it with considering different financial indicators and rank the banks to find the systematically important ones. Why it is relevant here? Because this BCBS 368 has been fully implemented in the US on these systematically important banks, but not necessarily for systematically unimportant banks. So this is something important about Basel Accords and regulations that they are not all similar for all financial institutions and also all countries. And they could not guarantee to manage all situations, of course. So as we discussed in the classes uh, of interest rate risk, the balance sheet and asset liability composition must be robust to the changes of interest rates. Uh, in the case of SVB, the rising rates uh, has hit their capital and drop in their share price. So the result is what? Uh, outflow of funds, bankruptcy and resolution, right? So even if we are not systematically most important banks in the country, calculating the liquid uh, liquidity coverage ratio, LCR and NSFR, as we had some examples in the class, is important for internal audit of risk department. So what I suggest, review how to calculate LCR and NSFR and the reserve of high quality liquid assets to save the balance sheet um, uh, of the bank with cash, tier one and tier two capital and liquid credit risk free assets. So the problem seems to be management around that interest rate and maybe did not follow some international recommendations on minimum reserves, high quality assets in SVB's balance sheet. 
uh, that was all about the international recommendation in Basel Accord and its measure and regulations. Now, at country level, we have also some lesson learned. In the class, we talked about the home approach and the host approach in interest rates risk management session. So we know that the home approach is something that central banks consider for the necessary report. But what if we have some subsidiaries of foreign banks at home? The central banks must make sure that those subsidiaries are standalone self-sufficient for capital and liquidity also. So if the parent goes bankruptcy, the overseas operation is an impacted. And this is the way that some credit rating agencies evaluate the subsidiaries, even sometimes with the different rates in compare with their parents. Let's now review some lesson learned in internal level of the bank. So remember the hedging interest rate risk and immunization strategies that we discussed in our course. And the story of mortgage-backed securities and bonds portfolio hedging by fixed coupon vanilla securities like U.S. Treasuries. Even using well-known old-fashioned methods such as dollar value of O1, also known as DVO1, or duration value of a basis point, could be very helpful in these situations. Even if interest rates had been stable for a very long time, we must follow the risk management rules, right? And remember that interest rate volatility is something normal to happen. And if one of these risk factors act as a trigger, the interconnection of risk will amplify the problem by the other risks such as reputation risk, liquidity risk, market risk, and even credit risk. And you know from our classes how it works like a domino. So, in the institutional level, it might seem interesting if you know that SVB didn't have a chief risk officer the last eight months. If that's correct, that is a failure of management and the asset liability committee without the CRO, right? So, you can imagine that the stress testing for crisis scenarios and economic capital for unexpected loss might have a problem in a situation with lack of CRO. So as a result, uh, what we had in our course, which seems relevant to this recent case is Basel Accords and MIFID II, minimum reserve high quality assets in balance sheet and uh, LCR and NSFR calculation, Basel Committee on Banking Supervision 368, about interest rate risk in the bank book, systemically important banks by Camels and Disip, uh, interest rate risk management, dollar value of zero one, uh, the hedging interest rate risk and immunization strategies, central banks and two approaches, home approach and house approach, the interconnection of risk and the correlation, and the role of the asset liability committee and uh, CRO or chief risk officer.